Welcome back. It's time for Off the Press. And I've been joined by Chief Chide Johnson. He's a chief lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism. He's joining us from Lagos this morning. Good morning to you, Mr. Johnson. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. And um, it's a pleasure to be with you on this wonderful Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday indeed. Well, let's start with the Punch newspaper. And the punch is leading with El Rufai, Mwike, other nominees face Senate screening Monday. Well, the writers there, President will create new ministries from full cabinet in two weeks. That's Bajapi Amila and uh, National Assembly. Other state nominees awaits other state nominees. PDP faults Mwike's nomination lampoons Tinubu over list. There in front of the punch, you have the faces of those who made the list. Uh, give us your take on this list. It's finally out. Nigerians have been waiting for this list. Are you disappointed? Well, Were you expecting not, something different from um, President I, Tinubu? I am not disappointed. I am not elated. I'm just indifferent. Hmm. Um, the more things seem to change, the more they remain the same. Um, if he took the president 59 days before he could come up with this list, and this is the list you have been waiting for since, um, when he promised that he's going to eat the ground running, then why should anybody be excited? Or why should anybody be disappointed? Or why should anybody be elated? Because the more things seem to change, the more they remain the same. He seem, quote, same story, same old same people that we have constituting the core of this list. For example, the former governors, you are not going to bring in a former governor and give him a, a sub-ministry or an ordinary ministry, you are going to give him a super ministry. And then if you have governors that superintend over their states, and then they are part and parcel of what we have in terms of poor performance and poor delivery of what is required for sustainable human resource development, social development, um, economic development and political development, and you are bringing such into the cabinet at the national level, then what agenda are you setting? If you are bringing people that have caused division, mm. either through their actions, their speeches, or their inactions, and then you are using them to form a government that you meant to promote national unity, and then there's much left to be desired. So as far as I'm concerned, what is Wiki has been a press, had been a, cop, a minister before in the past. He was part of the much maligned 16 years of PDP administration that the APC has used as swan song in the last nine years. El Rufai was a minister under PDP administration in the past. Uh, so it's, it's like the recycling of, of, of people that have been part and parcel of what look let's look at it it's at every cycle the legislature is dominated by ex-governor who is a former pdp um governor the the secretary to the federal government the brain work of the government which is the civil service the secretary to the federal government is headed by a former pdp governor now an apc person in just in terms of george akume and now you are not bringing El Rufai. Um, so none of them should. I've said it that in Nigeria there are no political parties. And actually, says it's just political interest. And they don't really care about us. If Michael Jackson were to collect reality, he would have collected reality <laughs> for me. Because I've used that term more than any other term when I'm talking about the Nigerian political class. Because they don't really care about us. So as far as I'm concerned, there's what, what type of expectation? Look. These are people that were operated as employees at their state level. You knew the way Wiki operated as a governor. You knew the way El Rufa operated as a governor. And you're not bringing such person into the cabinet at the national level, whereby 
they no longer have final authority, final control. They have to report and comply with some certain, certain in their in their respective states, they are the final authority. This time around, they have to comply with some certain rule, certain basic. I will see how it goes because we spoke about Buhari's administration, the failure of the Buhari administration. Don't forget that the cabinet of Buhari administration was also dominated by former governors. You when know, this governor former governor syndrome, this former governor syndrome and this uh, political settlement thing, do you ever see Nigeria moving away from this? I don't know whether to call it madness or, or trend, because listening to Nigerians speak, you can tell Nigerians are not happy about this, having these people being recircled all over the place from one administration to another. The governors who didn't, just as you have said, who didn't perform very well in their states or who were so authoritarian in their states, moving to the, 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 the national level to become ministers and all of that or end up at the National Assembly. Do you see us breaking away from this? It's becoming a trend that's come to stay. Yeah. Yeah, politics is a game of interest and a game of number. And so I was, I was having a discussion with my, some of my colleagues. They said, okay, you know what the president would do? The president would just use the political class for two years. After two years, he's going to, he's going to reshuffle his cabinet. He's going to send them. I said, no. No, if you are even going to remove those, it's those that don't have political capital. Because in two years' time, the president will be will, will, will start campaigning for re-election. And once campaigning for re-election starts, you need political capital. So don't forget it. It's there. These governors, these former governors are going to be in this cabinet for the next four years. And they might likely be there for the next eight years. We saw in we saw in Burari's administration. As far as I'm concerned, there's no difference between this cabinet and other cabinets we have had. Well, their um, portfolios the past, are not yet which, known. Um, their portfolios well, are not well, yet known. That's, of, that's some of the argument. And then don't also forget one of the riders you have, whereby the chief of staff to the president said, you know what, there may likely be new ministries being formed. New, new ministries being formed. When government is telling us to cut our courses, mm. our, 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 to, cut, to cut our expense, uh, and, to, and uh, we, we are talking about reduction of the cost of governance, and they are talking about building creating new more ministries yeah we've been talking about merging what? some ministries when we when we spoke about you recall about some time ago we spoke about the them looking at the original report in order to reduce the cost of governance and the rest of it yes. now what's the essence of creating new ministries you create jobs for the boys abby is that what was promised is that what this administration promised that they are going to do they are going to do for us you are creating more ministries you are having more ministers you are Having more permanent secretary, you are expanding. You are expanding the bureaucracy of governance, and at the same time, you are asking people to take responsibility to make sacrifices, and you are not willing to make any sacrifice. Where you have, um, uh, it's going to be like 43, 44 um, persons cabinet, and then you. What what I've said. What type of meaningful discussion can you have in the National Executive Council meeting, where you have about close to about 60 people coming to deliberate? Deliberate over a period of five hours. Let's allocate minutes to them. Deliberate over a period of five hours. You have 60 people. How many minutes will go to each person? What meaningful contribution can you have in such in such council? And you recall that time we said that in America there are only 13 departments. And that the 13 department was the Department of Homeland Security, which was created as a result of 9-11 in order to bring about coordination among the various security agencies. In America, both the internal and external security agents, so that they can share, they can share information. Just starting now, you are now having close to about forty. You see, you don't need rocket science to tell you that you are working on the path of failure. As long as you keep going on the wrong way, the best way to 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 move forward when you're on the wrong track is to go backward. That's the best way. The best way to make to move forward when you're going on the wrong direction is to turn back. So turning backwards sometimes might mean going forward. Are you getting my point? So do we need to still go on this route of having as many cabinet as possible, as having as many superhuman beings, human beings that operated as emperor, human beings that have caused division? I can say for a fact that what type of character is Rufai, for instance? What, just look at the inflammatory statement he's made in the last eight years. Look at what he's done in Cardinal. The for most example, recent one that of, many were hoping he would apologize for or, 
or deny so uh, is still hanging in the so, air. So, there are so, so many vile comments it's made in the past. And then look at someone someone like Nia Songwiki. I ask people, can anybody effectively name the deputy governor? He operated as, a, as an emperor. Nobody knew any other person as an actor or player in reverse politics. Everything centers around around him. So these are these are people that have operated in the past. They've operated as emperor, and I've said that we should address them as imper his imperial majesty, not not as his excellency, because these are the characters you are bringing to the national level, and these are the characters that you are bringing to superintend over ministries, agencies, and department of government. Wiki had been minister of education, state before. Elva has been minister of federal. Capital. Are they the only one? Must they be? Must they be in all government? Are there no fresh ideas? Are there no other people? Just, just look at the way. Look at the type of democracy um, we are practicing. This is what fellow will call party party government. Look, the committees of the National Assembly were released yesterday. Look at this. This the children of the former of former governors that have committee chairman. The, yeah. the the daughter of Ibori. The daughter of Ibori had the committee took a committee chairmanship. The daughter, the son of Alawa Kala, the son, the son of El Rufai. El Rufai's son is also committee. there. So the father will be a minister. The son will be the, the, the son, the son, and then you see in Ocean State, a, a, a APC playing the ostrich. APC playing the ostrich, uh, taking um, the governor to court, saying that the governor appointed himself as the commissioner for 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 for, for works it's, it's unfortunate the situation we have found ourselves is just that the civil society is dead it's just that we have we don't we don't even have legal luminaries that are fighting for human what's rights your take as on, a result this, of that uh, a lot of what was your take on on the fact that the federal government has gotten a court injunction uh that's stopping the organized labor from going on strike yeah that's that we saw, 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 we saw the judiciary being used to try to stop ASU. We saw those various attempts. The question you ask is that um, why would the judiciary stop a legitimate action of of organized labor? You see, it is it is it is part of the fundamental human right of the citizenry, not to even talk of labor, to to petition government to. To, to to protest. Are you getting my point? No, your protest should not disturb my own my, my my own my own freedom. However, the right to protest, the right to petition government, the right to express your your opinion, the freedom of association and assembly are core fundamental elements enshrined in every constitution, established by the fundamental declaration of 1948 under the United Nations on what should be the rights of the citizenry. We saw attempt by that administration by the last administration to stifle labor when the federal government approached the court to stop us from going to strike, to stop doctors from going to strike. So where you have the judiciary being code with the executive, it is not good for the democracy. What is required is for the judiciary to be independent, to listen to both cases. The right of lawful assembly cannot be legislated upon, cannot be adjudicated upon by any court. These are fundamental. They are the cornerstone of democracy. And when you touch on the cornerstone of democracy, what you are inviting in any given society is anarchy. Because well, the Labour has said we have in seven days from now, well, today makes it six days from now, they are going to go on strike. What, 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 what might take place, do you think? But you see, for me, as far as I'm concerned, Strike does not solve problem in actual sense when you look at it from the point of view from strike. Strike does not solve does not solve any any problem because look, when you talk about strike, strike only 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 affects um, the people working in civil service. How many people do you have in civil service? Majority of Nigerians are working in the informal sector. It affects their economy. Majority of Nigerians are are, 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 are owners of small and medium scale enterprise. So if you look at it, when someone that operates his business is forced to shut down when you compare to those civil servants, whether they go to work or they didn't go to work, at the end of the day, they will be paid their salaries. So as uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a bit uh, skeptical about strike because if you look at it at the end of the day, what is it that will get in return for those strikes? There are other means and there are some other engagements in which that can be can be deployed as far as um getting 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 the getting the 
the attention of those that are in government. Which other means? Which other so, means would you suggest? Because Labour will tell you they've been in talks. And you got to a point the labor itself began to feel uncomfortable with the discussions and and so now they're resorting to strike action what what do you which other means would you say well, uh, labor could have well, used uh, or should use to get the attention of government to achieve well, what they are example, seeking for <clears throat> well for, for example you can shut down government you can do specific strike strike in the presidency strike in the national assembly and strike in the courts Another critical sector, you look at critical sector where you could we could you could do strikes or strikes in revenue generating the revenue generating area of, of government where government generates revenue, strike in NPA, striking, strike, striking some critical sectors in which government generate revenue, strike in NNPC, for example. Um you, you have a shutdown of, of those of those of those critical sectors. But over, overall, when you look at holistic strike. It affects more the informal sector to be to be fair and candid. And at the end of the day, a labor will force everybody to go to, to, to sit at home for two weeks. At the end of the day, the civil servants that are usually beneficiary of the strike, of the striker and uh, the labor leaders themselves, after one or two weeks, they begin to yield to the pressure of the executive. And then it's just like we what you ask yourself the question, what is the essence of of the strike in the first in the first instance? You see, we, the the real strike labor should do is is labor organizing itself. We had the elections. The labor could have organized. There are consequences for your actions. Labor could have spoken with with one voice with respect to what the, the various union and the rest of it. And what you have also seen is the politicization of the union. In the past, you need student union. They've 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 they prescribed student union for you to have a successful strike action. Actually. You need student union. I recall how, while we were in school, how we forced the then Babangida administration to leave to leave Lagos in 1991. So I recall that I, I knew the number of time, the number of times we went on strike. That's so how people student like union. that's how people like Shawara emerged, isn't it? Exactly. It was it was it was the student union. Unilab. It was not the student union president then, but it was later student union president. Uh, it was later union student student union. I think um uh, Agbaji Shekwa Agbaji or um I recall is the red drum, we call him red drum was 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 the student union president dead. Then he later became student union president. I recall how we shut down Todd Milan Bridge. How we shut down Todd Milan Bridge. The federal capital territory was still in Lagos. How we shut down Todd Milan Bridge from Bagada end and then from Ibutimeta end. So there was no way you could connect, you could connect the island. There was no way tough civil servant could connect the island. We shut it down, and then I knew the number of federal government cars that were seized by Unilag. By Unilag, there's another story about that that made me not to participate in union in actual sense because the cars that were seized, I knew what student did with it, and I asked, I raised a question concerning if we are trying to fight injustice in, in the society, we too should not be perpetrating evil yeah. as well as that. That I knew, I knew the experience I got from that. So you've seen student union being prescribed. You've seen the union, various other unions being politicized. You see the National Union of Road Transport Workers. They are key members of the organized labor. The National Union of Road Transport Workers in Lagos and in Nigeria, they are they have become partisan. They have become part and parcel of the ruling class themselves. So how do you want to organize a successful success? Okay, the organized, the, the organized civil society. The civil society have become consultant to government in whatever various form they are, whether they are in the health sector, whether they are in the legal sector, or whichever one, name them at after all. One of them is, 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 is a former minister today. He's a former minister today and is a presidential spokesperson for the campaign of, of some of them that are journalists, some of them that are journalists in the past, they are they are spokesperson of, of, of the the the, the 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 Senate leader used to be the Senate leader, Bamidele Okoyemi, used to be a student union leader. Today, will he allow any student union leader to function? So we have key critical sector of holding people in government accountable. I've said it. Just look at how organized and how vibrant the Nigerian society, the, 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 the civil society of Nigeria was under military administration. Compare and compare and contrast that to a democratic dispensation. And then you'll just be wondering what has really, what has really, what has really happened in our society. What has struck us? 
Okay, so let's move to another headline here on the Punch newspaper. Niger, the coup there. UN halts humanitarian operations. US, France condemn Niger coup. Coup again well, in Africa? Well, um, I, well, I might support other, other countries, but from my point of view, this is my point of opinion, you would find complicity in some of the things that is happening in, 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 in West Africa. Look at the coup, coup in Burkina Faso, coup happened in Mali, coup happened in, in Guinea, now it's in, in, in Niger, in Miami, and it should be a cause for concern for, 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 for all for all actors in the democratic space. And what is happening um, um, in West Africa should be a cause for concern for every one of us. Because there's a saying in my local dialect, uh, debt that is coming close to your, to your neighborhood is, is, is sending you a signal. What are the things that were wrong in that society that prompted military intervention in government? Mm -hmm. What are the things? What, what, are the, what are the fault lines? What are the red lines? What, what, what are the signals that people do are seeing in the society that they didn't pay attention to? It's important for other West African countries to pay attention to all of, to all of these elements, to all of these issues that led to coup cannot just happen suddenly. Mm. It must have been, it must have been bringing up, bringing up over time. Unfortunately, our former president um, said he was going to settle down in, 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 in Nigeria because if Nigerians are troubling him, he will go and settle down in Niger. I don't know how he's going to settle down in Niger. Unfortunately, also, we, have, we tried to build the railway, the railway station. We didn't connect Nigeria. We are connecting, we are connecting Niger to, to, to Maradi, from, 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 from Kano to Maradi. And um, I hope that will not affect our investment. But it is very, very important for attention to be paid for. ECOWAS, beyond rhetoric, serious attention. When there are headlines, when there are fault lines, when there are signals, there are indications that things are not right in the society. It is important for African Union. It's also important for 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 West for 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 ECOWAS to point out these things to the leaders of this country for them to do the right thing. Okay, let me move. So from all this one that France is doing, France is just playing the ostrich. You know, you know, you know. There is there is there is an attempt. And look at the age of these people planning planning this coup in these various countries. Look at the age. Ages of, of 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 the various leaders of, of in Burkina Faso in Mali, in Burkina Faso in Mali in Guinea. Look at their ages. They are they are they are, they are less they are less than forty people planning this school. And it's 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 a signal also for us to understand that the that generation is discontented with with the leadership of the various leaders in Africa. And you knew you knew the movement of or what the movement in the last election. Of that particular age, you knew you knew how they participated in the political, and it's important for this present administration to embrace that generation. We are taught that that generation will form the core of the cabinet. What you have the same old same people, so they should pay attention. They should pay attention and meet the needs of this particular of this particular generation who who have lost hope. And if this present administration in Nigeria is saying that this campaign is winning hope, what type of hope would they have in this kind in this kind of cabinet of people that have handled states, federal, and local government at one point or the other in the past? Mm. Okay, so let's move from the punch to the Guardian newspaper. And the Guardian newspaper is leading with summer travel and inflation, overpriced airfares. 795 naira to the dollar exchange rate for close holiday trips for average Nigerians. It's actually their big story. Uh, and details of that on pages four and five of the Guardian newspaper. This increase uh, in uh, airfares is, is, is alarming. I was in Enugu last week. Um, I was in Enugu. Not only the increase in airfare, the aviation sector is suffering from epileptic service. I was meant to be in Enugu on Wednesday. I booked the flight with one of the major airlines and then um, to travel on Wednesday for my meeting on Thursday. And then, lo and behold, 0.45 a.m., I, I got a text message, which I didn't check until about 9 a.m. when I woke up because the flight was 2.30 was two and then that the flight is canceled. And here I am to facilitate a training in Enugu. How do I get to Enugu? 9.30 in the morning. I, 
how do I? So I had to go. I had to go. I had to go through public transport, and and then um, it was it was an harrowing experience. But I tell you one thing: I was trying to book the ticket on Sunday prior to that Thursday. It was it was difficult to get a ticket, and you know the, my return ticket was one and two thousand. My the ticket I bought to go was ninety six thousand. Ninety six thousand to go from Lagos to Enugu. Now my return ticket was one hundred and two thousand return ticket. No, so I'm spending close to about two. 100,000 to buy a ticket to fly locally to and fro. Now, and then the roads are bad. You've increased the prices of petroleum product PMS specifically. So road travel are expensive. And then the issue of security. So you have a situation of demand and supply. There is a huge demand for air travel. As a result of security, I knew yeah. how tensed my my son was for me to travel by road, and I knew I was uh, I, I was using X word for those that invited me for the training. That why would they invite my dad for this? Why would they go by road and stuff like that? You know how many trauma most 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 family members have gone because they are they are they are, are love one to travel to the road. So that's the reason why you see the air prices skyrocketing. That's that's all. Then to the regulatory body, you see the regulatory body in Nigeria, we don't even know what they are doing. A, 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 a student of mine as a journalist traveled to the United Kingdom and he said, I've been using three gig, three gig data. I've uploaded all manners of video. Three gig. He said the data I bought is three gig. Since Sunday, I've not exhausted that data. And that you just buy 10 gig in Nigeria, and before you say Jack Robinson, it's gone. It's 10 gig data, same thing as 10 gig data in United Kingdom. What are the undercurrents that are going with it? Are we much more interested in revenue generation or providing services, quality services for the citizenry? So that whoever is operating a business is operating the business in the interest of your national. That's what is called national interest. Except it affects the interest of the leadership. Mm -hmm. That's when they begin to talk about national it interest. But issue. national interest, talk about anyone operating a business, anyone engaging in one activity in a nation, must do that in the interest of your national. Who are your national? They are your citizen. The citizen of the country. Not those in government, not those in power. But what, what, what do we know and what can we say? Well, let me just chip it in there that... For me, when flights are cancelled, I think it's not something... Yeah, it, you're, you may be disappointed because you have an appointment somewhere and all of that, but sometimes when flights are cancelled, usually there is a genuine reason, uh, and that is a, a reason of safety. And I think for anyone yeah, traveling, are, safety there is are key. Reason of, there are reasons of safety. There are an economic reason I can also tell you. If that flight is chartered, it's an economic... You know, mm. Look, one airline is still hoeing me, the ticket for my flight to 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 you since 2009 have not been refunded. Wow, 2009. You know yeah, 2019 rather, 2019. Oh. You know what happened? I had to return for my birthday, so I had no choice but to buy to buy another ticket. Now, you know what happened? It was the political season. The flight to, the flights were chartered by the political class, so they pay more money, so they diverted the aircraft. So sometimes when they do it, they do it for economic reasons. Why did safety reason, no doubt, but in most cases, it's for economic reason. When somebody calls for the flight, probably I want to do a wedding. One, one of the political class wants to do a wedding hmm. in one state this weekend. And then he had to bring in people. You saw, you saw the event that happened in, in Plato State over last weekend, where you saw the governor of or your state, the governor of the former governor of River State, and then the, the, the chief justice of the federation. I think it's the appeal, is the president of the appeal court or the head of the president that was doing something in Plato State. Now, what do you think will happen to the airline? <laughs> it's the same way you charter a bus to come and pick you up. If you want to go for an event in the East, mm -hmm. you go to God is Good and you charter one. So every other user, every other user will not have access to to that particular boss because you've chattered, because you are playing premium price for it. 
Okay, let's move from that story to another one here, still on the Guardian newspaper. Please re-strategize as IPOP declares two weeks sit at home in the East. Well, well um, Abacha said something that if his urgency last, lasted for hours. more than 24 hours, then government has the hand in it. For, for example, we look, this, um, you are talking about the insurgency in the East, and you need, um, um, I'll say something in my, in my local dialect again. No, no, I think we can look at that, but I'm able to see you. You cannot cut an oak tree when the oak tree is fully matured. It is easier to cut it when it's Tender. when it's when it when it when it when it's when, it, when it's small. So you nip it in the bud. Now you see in the crisis of IPOP, you knew well the genesis of it. All we need to do is to nip it in the bud. And who are those that are the sponsor? Identify them and deal with them. Except they have political capital. That's why you can't deal with them. Now you can see the nuisance that Asali to Kubo has been doing now. Now, inside for government to nip that in the board, you have non-state actors using non manners of platforms to promote their ideology, to promote anti-establishment, anti anti-democratic values. And nothing has been done to that effect. So in five years' time, in six years' time, you'll be saying, OK, eh, government is re-strategizing, the military is re-strategizing the world. Once you have criminal elements, deal with those criminal elements when they are just forming. The moment you deal with them, then you provide peace. Because providing peace, safeguarding peace of the people and territorial integrity is the first responsibility of government. When government fails to do that, government is inviting anarchy. Yeah, well, this is interesting coming from the police because I know that... Uh, was it not last week or, you know, the federal government sent troops over there, military, to the southeast to counter this sit-at-home order by uh, Simon Ekba. And let me ask you a question I asked uh, our guests when we were talking about it. The court had ruled that Mazi Namdikalu be released. Shouldn't that be the first step in bringing peace to the southeast, releasing him in obedience to the court directions, directive? Well, um, one of the things we have seen is the overwhelming power of the executive over all the agencies of government. We have seen the disregard by the executive across the length and breadth of the globe in democratic governance, having disrespect for the courts and having disrespect for the legislature. You can even look at it in advanced democracy. You know, 12 professor came around in the United States and told the president of the United States to disregard the Supreme Court ruling on the student loan, on the student loan um, judgment, which said it's illegal. So as far as I'm concerned, there is a need for democracy to be studied, and there is a need for new checks and balances to be put in place concerning what we should have in democratic society. Because the needed checks that is meant to be provided by the but the, the judiciary does not have any 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 agencies to carry out its enforcement. It relies on the agencies of, of the executive to carry out its enforcement. The police, the correctional services, the DSS, and the rest of their part and parcel of the executives. They are agencies of government under the executive. So institution whereby the, the judiciary expects the the arm of the executive to carry out its order, to comply with it does not carry out its order, does not follow its directive, does not follow its judgment. What do you expect? So the judiciary only has the force of those pronouncements. And if you do have respect for it, it's just a matter of time. You are inviting anarchy in the society. And we have said it. Once court have ruled over the matter, look at, for example, the show of shame by the DSS and the correctional services concerning the Mifili. Um, then this, 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 about two days ago, when the court ruled that okay is provided bill, and then you are rearrest him, and the rest of it, all of those drama, those that are in government today should understand that those of them, for example, if I'm the central bank governor today, I'll be looking at what is being done to me can happen to me when there's a change of government in the future. Mm. Uh, or if you are if you are if you are Asari Dokubo, the rest are short. 
that what is happening to um, to to Unam Dikano might likely happen to you in the future if a government that is not favorable to your to your to your to your political uh, to your political views and to your social views is in government. So it's important for us to establish those tenets of democracy, those values of democracy that talked about independence of the judiciary, respect for the rule, rule of law, protection of the human rights, supremacy of the constitution. All of these values is important for us to strengthen to strengthen democracy. When you don't have respect for such, you begin to build opposition within within the society. And these are some of the likelihood of what we witnessed. We said earlier that in our neighboring countries, what are the things that happen in our neighboring in neighboring countries? Look at um, what was um, what was meant to happen in Senegal, for example. You know, the Senegal president was a former opposition leader, and then he became president, and he himself wanted to extend the tenure. He had to, he took the intervention of ECOWAS AU for him to stop him from going for a third time. When in the past, he was an opposition that was jailed. Then when he became the president, he himself jailed um, the opposition the opposition leader. So it's, it's people don't learn from history. And history has a way of repeating itself. All right. Now that we mentioned DSS, there's also on this uh, front page of The Guardian, DSS silent over alleged arrest of former aviation minister, Sirica. What do you know about this? For me, for as far as I'm concerned, the, there's the need for those in government today to, to reduce the influence and interference of DSS in prosecuting um, political, economic, and financial crimes. Are you getting my point? Mm -hmm. Now, you have the EFCC to prosecute this. Let the DSS go after, let them go after IPOP. It's the state security service. In actual sense, there's nothing like DSS. It is, it is the state security service, SSS, that is, now, is, now, is, is, is codified in our law. It's SSS that is codified. So it's the state security service. Let them go after IPOP. Let them go after banditry. Let the police, let EFC, let other agencies of government prosecute financial crimes, corruption crimes. EFC is better suited. Other than using state security services to be going after those, 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 those elements, those that are offering threats to national security, to security of lives and property, to the territorial integrity of the nation. These are the people we should focus the SS on. When you begin to use DSS to do this activity, it is weaponization of the judicial system. It is the weaponization of government. DSS, by training and by design, by training, and I'm saying it emphatically, DSS, by training and by design, are not meant to go about this type of activity. It is meant for the police. It is meant for the EFCC to pursue such crimes. There are other crimes, heinous crimes, heinous crimes that DSS is designed. So by their design and by their nature and by their training, they are not well equipped to handle this. That's why you witness what you witness. The drama you witness with DSS concerning me, Philip, you witness that same drama in the court with Shore, when DSS held Shore for many years under Burali's administration. We should, those are antithetical. You can be in political power. You can be in the good book of DSS today. And you can be the one using DSS today. You might be a victim of DSS tomorrow. And that's why the right thing must be done. It, is, it behoves on each and every one of us to tell those in government to do the right thing. All right, let's move on to the nature news. Um, it's leading with transport ministry promotes bicycles as eco-friendly commuting option for sustainable future. You see picture of bicycles there. Um, I'm, I'm well, not... <laughs> you, you remember the minister of transport under our passenger administration, Ujuma Dweki of blessed memory, mm. um, who came up with the idea of transport and I think he was transporting himself to, to office, then went for subsidy he was removed under a passenger administration and then it was knocked down do we have bicycle lane in nigeria and then those that are asking us to embrace bicycle what do they drive 
They drive Prado, they drive Jeep, they drive just like those that are talking about climate change using private jet. When you talk about the likes of John Kerry, when you talk about the likes of Bill Gates, they are talking about climate change. How how uh, we have contributed to yet they are using you see the hypocrisy of those advocating change it's playing the ostrich is one of the things you see with people that are heading international government agencies and even ministries and departments and agencies of government now the national assembly members are approved to buy for themselves cars that will use fossil fuel hmm. now the presidency is planning to increase the number of ministries that we have so that we have substantive ministers so that you have ministers of state and they are going to buy them of each chakra these ministers are going to have it yet they are requiring us to cut our our coat our our, our coat according to the size of our clothes so it's, it's just hypocrisy which bicycle where will you ride the bicycle which route will you ride the bicycle are there are there bicycle tracks for nigeria and then if nigerians are knocked off the road by 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 by, by vehicles by the siren by the siren of public officials who will use their siren to, to harass you off the road. Now, they don't even have respect for other cars using the road. Would they, would they have respect for people riding bicycle? I'm even trying to picture it. I mean, just it, it's just unimaginable. Totally unimaginable. Yeah. To see they, bicycle they being... They, to see bicycles on talk, our roads, the risks... They talk before, they talk before they think. That's their problem. They talk before they think. Okay, FCT eclairs 5,000 shanties, illegal development in Katampe district. Do you know anything well, about um, that? The, well, well, one of the things you can't take away for Erufai, actually, is the going back to Abuja master plan, hmm. which, was, um, which was what one of the major things it did while he was Minister of Federal Capital Territory. There's no doubt about that. Um, there's no doubt about that that he really did something good and something positive about 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 that. As far as I'm concerned, when you when you go through, I remember when I was going to Kaduna about three weeks ago. I had to go through Abuja because there was no flight to Kaduna, and then you so you have to, have to travel by road to Kaduna. You still see these shanty towns, even as you're approaching the airport. You see encroachment, encroachment on government land. I thought that the land in Abuja belongs to the government. You see encroachment on those lands by communities, by, by, by people. Well, whether you like it or not, there are shanties in every developed society. Wherever you see, um, I didn't know Times, 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 Times Magazine did a particular story whereby, um, you know, the service community, the service community, those that work as guards, as cooks, as chefs, as the rest of them, they live directly opposite to eyebrow areas. In every eyebrow area, not far from it, adjacent to it, is a shanty. Mm. Because the drivers, the cooks, <coughs> those that service them, their family are usually in shanty. So if you come to VI, there are shanties in VI. I knew where shanties are. If you go to Lekki, there are shanties in Lekki. Mm. You, you might be shocked to know that there are shanties even in Banana, Banana Island, where people that service, so so it's it's it's, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. It's nothing new because those that service the rich, the poor that service the rich, um, are often suffer from neglect when it comes to. And then we also look at when government is doing projects. Do they do project based on uh, democratic capital, which is the number of votes? It is the community that supply less votes that get the bulk where the rich. Are living that you have class A project, the community where the votes come from, you don't get any project from. Go on, do your study. I've done my own with respect to that. Where you have the bulk of the votes from, you don't see projects there. Oh, well, I, I, yeah, I mean, that example. reminds me of what uh, Mr. Fulani was saying recently. Is it not Mr. Dele Fulani, uh, who is complaining that despite all the votes they gave to President Tinubu from his state, that they have to come through people in Lagos to be able to access Abuja? So well, the, the, well, that's that's well, um, <laughs> that's another issue. Bringing for, another twist another, to it. That's a, that's another issue from another state. Yes. Uh, they, they they haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> uh, you've seen the cabinet. 
you've seen the actors and players. For example, the Ogun State nominee is a player in Lagos State. He plays all his politics in Lagos State. The Ekiti State nominee is a player in Lagos. He plays all his politics in Lagos. So they haven't seen nothing yet with respect to uh, when the time for gubernatorial election comes, they, they should, some states should not be surprised that those that will play politics in the state will be the one that will go and be the governor of their respective <laughs> states. Because it's the politics of, of who I know and politics of who I work with and politics of loyalty. That's the politics of what we practice in Nigeria and not politics of competence and national interest. It's, it's not peculiar. So, and that's, that informs some of the decisions you've seen that have been taken with respect to the sharing of the committee members of the national of the national of the national assembly the father will be a minister the son will be the son will be a chairman of a committee on on on, on finance or is it on committee on appropriation it is well with nigeria <laughs> who, who will recover from i recall when when Aulawa's daughter wanted to contest the gubernatorial election in lagos state under sdp in 1991 I recall what he was told, Tokumba Dosum. Mm. I remember that story. Said we cannot serve the father and serve the daughter, despite the fact of the legacy that Awolowo built in the southwest. She was vehemently rejected by 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 the people. That no 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 no. There is decency. There is ethics. I don't know where we have turned that decency to in politics now. It seems the more knowledgeable we are, the more educated we are the more we have lost our cultural value, cultural value of what is called Omolobi in mm. Yoruba land. I don't know what is called in other culture, but the cultural value of what is called Omolobi in Yoruba, in Yoruba land is we have lost those values. Because if, if in 1990, Tokumba Dosumu could be rejected, Tokumba Ulo Dosumu could mm. be rejected. And people said that was what killed that campaign, that no, 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 we cannot serve the father and serve the daughter. It's impossible. That killed a campaign. And in 1991, if we are so sophisticated and so enlightened like that, and then in 2023, the rest of the political class through the length and breadth of Nigeria will be imposing their children, their sons and daughters, their cronies in various offices, then we have lost the value of Amaluabi. There's none of them. I'm saying it from head to two. There's Amaluabi. There's none. Okay, just before we wrap up, let's, let me take you back to the Punch newspaper. This advice from the World Bank to Nigeria, reduce government borrowing from CBN. How are you yeah, seeing you see, this? You see, when people talk about, um, um, when you look at the Federal Reserve in America, when they said they removed the, the, the debt cap, what it is done is that you approach the Congress. The Congress then gives you approval. Then the United States government will approach the Federal Reserve Bank who will borrow government money. In Nigeria, it's directive. You don't follow the due diligence. You recall when the Edo State government said that government can no longer meet its obligation, that we are printing more money, we are printing more money. It was a lone voice. Obaseki said it yeah. long time ago. It was a lone voice shortly after COVID that government was printing money Government was printing money. Rather than government to borrow money from central bank, government was busy printing, and that has affected the value of Naira. You could see how the exchange rate of Naira compared to other currency in Africa, in West Africa to be precise, and compared to the value of the dollar. So it's, it's, it's very, very clear. You must follow the due diligence, even if you want to borrow. You must not circumvent the process. If government wants to borrow money, from the central bank. There must be a transparent approach, not government just calling. And that's the reason why Emefele is facing the music. Mm -hmm. All others that were involved with him, they are, they, they are lounging in, 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 in one exclusive club or in one exclusive house now, whereas he is lounging in detention. It's very, very important for whoever is the central bank governor to point it out on how these things are done with respect to how government can borrow legitimately and what government cannot borrow. We can't be borrowing money to fund the lifestyle we cannot afford. You know, that lifestyle we cannot afford, it is increasing the, the number of ministries we have. That lifestyle we cannot afford is increasing the number of committees. You see, we didn't read the story. The, the, the Speaker of the House of Rep increased the committee from 100, 
a standing committee from 103 to 1 to one, from 103 to 134, 143. We can't be doing that. You can't. You can't be. You look. You are nine. If you don't have any money, we don't have to go to bank to borrow money to buy cars, to buy office equipment. You know what we do in government? Government will go to bank to borrow money to fund lifestyle. To fund lifestyle, we cannot afford. It's part afford. of the reasons Nigerians are strongly kicking against this money being allocated to uh, the members in the House. Yeah. They want to buy bulletproof yeah, cars and, and all of that from a loan. It's it crazy. Is the, it is the National Assembly we are looking at. By the time you put commissioners in place in the various states, and then you put in place the Federal Executive Council, the number of aides, the number of special assistants that they will have, then you know that indeed they have not reduced the cost of governance. They are asking us to do something while they are doing something else. Well, thank you so much, Chide Johnson, my chief, Chide Johnson, for your time. It's a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> and insight it's, and of it's, the press. It's a pleasure to be with you, Her Majesty, to serve <laughs> in your kingdom. Thank you. Chief Jude Johnson yeah. is a chief lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos State, and he's been my guest on Of the Press. Stay with us, we'll be back for our very first hot topic on the breakfast.